Ladies and gentlemen, this evening's performance of The Diz Explorers will begin in two minutes. Excellent listening locations are still available all around Showcase Promenade. Due to the use of alcohol and opinions around the lagoon, for your safety, we request that you remain on the promenade side of all railings. During the show, please watch your step and take small children firmly by the hand. Once again, this evening's performance of The Diz Explorers will begin in just two minutes. Thank you. present a visual journey, an international fantasy of music and light. We're about to embark on a sparkling abstract expedition around World Showcase. With the music as your passport, we'll discover sights and sounds from colorful ports of call. And to celebrate our journey, the countries will be united by the festive elements of water, fire, and light. And now, let your imagination be your guide as Epcot Center proudly presents Illuminations. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Diz Explorers podcast. Where each episode, see I remembered, <laughs> <laughs> we explore the many avenues of the great Disney universe. This week we're a little light. Uh, we're getting we're into August now. Uh, everybody's kind of taking their last summer vacations and doing their thing before schools get rolling. So uh, Melanie's out doing her thing, whatever she's doing. Jessica's on a beach somewhere. So you all are stuck <laughs> with myself, Adrian, and Milford. If you ask me, it's a win for you people because <laughs> it's just more of us. <laughs> right. That means we get to talk more than we usually do. That's right. So, <laughs> so tonight, I, you know, I don't, I don't uh, know how many people follow the old Twitter machine on here and, and keep up with, I guess, up-to-date things. But for those of you who's probably – I'm trying to remember what it was about last week. I saw something come across from WDW News Today because doesn't everything come from WDW <laughs> News Today, at least in the, you know, in, the, uh, in the old rumor mill department. So anyway, uh, the Illuminations ending rumor has swirled again because I guess one of their sources or however they find this stuff out – which I guess it's public knowledge when permits are filed for building improvements or utility improvements. I guess if you comb the Florida, that count, Orange County public records, I'm sure you can find all this stuff easily. So anyway, I guess permits were filed for electrical and some other sorts of improvements to the World Showcase Lagoon, I guess basically under the water and here, there, buildings surrounding it. So that, of course, you know, the first thing anybody thinks of at that point is, oh, hey, they're putting new pipes under the lake, so Illuminations is ending. Because <laughs> that's where my mind would go. But anyway, I, it, it's obviously not out of the complete realm of possibility with Wishes going and a new show there. You have a new show at Animal Kingdom. Uh, Phantasmic is still rolling at the studios, but you do have the Star Wars fireworks, which is probably been the longest running nighttime show there in quite since sorcery in the sky mm -hmm. which has been you know long long defunct but prior to that it was you know some other different shows that were happening seasonally so 
I, I guess that Star Wars one is the first one. Like almost permanent. Permanent one since yeah. Sorcery in the Sky ended, which I can't think off the top of my head when that was early 2000s, I think. It wasn't too long. It was before the hat. Mm, no, it was before 98 because I never got to see it. Okay, so it was before the hat then. It was before oh, the we millenn- waited for the hat. Free hat. Well, the hat was for the millenn- for the in 2000, I believe. So, oh yeah. Uh, or you know the or the hundred years one of I can't remember which one. Anyway, so all right, so yeah, so yeah, that was for hundred years of magic. Right. So sorcery in the sky ended long before that. Then yeah, so that was a cool yeah. show. There was a big giant inflatable Mickey that used to come out on top of the Chinese theater and shoot the sparks out of his hand for the end Aww. of the show. It was a good little fireworks show. So I guess our basis of conversation tonight was going to be if Illuminations was is actually going away, what would we do either in its place to completely replace it or would we just improve upon certain parts of the existing show? And uh, I'm sure this will spill out into the other nighttime shows that are out, that are available now to see in the parks. Uh, current versions, I would assume makes sense because there's no sense talking about ones that aren't there anymore <laughs> r.i.p wishes still right, right. <laughs> even yeah. though so my uncle just got back from his whirlwind tour of disneyland and walt disney world and everything else so they've saw happily ever after for their first time watching it on main street he you know had the sentiments of everybody else who has seen it it's fantastic best show disney has made forever the castle projections are are amazing and it's great and there's so much going on you know and yes there's fireworks too right i, right. I, I i've heard that from the beginning i i get it i i don't want to watch a movie on the castle i want to watch fireworks in the sky then again like i said two weeks ago or when we when i probably brought this up again i have not seen it from main street so i can't comment fully on it. I only saw it from the beach at the Polynesian, and the music didn't thrill me. I do not like the song. Oh my and god, I love the song. <laughs> I know, sign. so does my mother. She's like, I cannot like the song. I was like, I don't I know, it's it. annoying. I said, I don't want to, I don't need to hear somebody sing, play music. Oh my god, oh my god. every time it play, I just, I sing along, I can't help it. Okay. It so, is an earworm, I guess, which is what they wanted. <laughs> here's my thing. I am not a die-hard Illuminations Reflections of Earth kind of person. I was telling Milford before we started recording, I have not seen that show from Epcot in eight years. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. I mean, like, when we've stayed at Boardwalk, we've, you know, seen it from the bridge or whatever. But, so, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking while we're talking, why am I not emotionally connected to it? And I think when you think about Wishes or Happily Ever After or whatever... It's sure of the park. You know what I mean? It's okay. at the yeah, castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the And right. then at Hollywood Studios, the Star Wars fireworks are at the Chinese Theater. But at Epcot, it's, I mean, it's in the lagoon, and that's fine. But that's not the iconic, like, oh, my gosh, when you come into Epcot, you know, it's Spaceship Earth. Right. That's what you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to see it. You know? So I feel like that's kind of why, why I'm lacking a little bit of an emotional connection to it. So if we're talking about ways we would change it, a nighttime spectacular in that park, is there a way that you could... I'm thinking about when we were coming at that last scene of Soren, right? Illuminations all together and have something over Spaceship Earth. I don't see why they couldn't. I mean, the lagoon isn't that far away from Spaceship Earth to shoot the fireworks off from, I guess, and have the focal point being standing in that entryway where the tombstones are. I mean, maybe right. when maybe when those eventually go and that's a more open area or whatever they do. Or even it. on the back side. There's a large pavilion back there if you got rid of some of the shade. I say that with quotation marks. Well, that's, <laughs> that's all going to be gone anyway when they redo oh, that nice. whole plaza, so... Right, but that's yeah, because the tombstones go away. Well, even on the backside in the in- Interventions Plaza around the Fountain of Nations, I right. mean, I'm assuming the fountain is staying. I believe that was in that artist rendering, but the rest mm-hmm. of that stuff was all going, and it was going to be very open because Communicore, right. or not Communicore, but Interventions, those wings I think were coming down as well. I think you're right. So it was a big, huge. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, I have that picture somewhere, but I mean, you can look it up. You know, it was from I- D, it was from D23, you know, last year. But I think if Disney's clearly not going to listen to me, but (laughs) 
that, that would be the change that I'm my favorite rides anyway. And when you're coming in, I get the biggest, stupidest grin on my face when you see the fireworks shoot up over Spaceship Earth. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And, oh, and the ending oh, of the yeah. Soren? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I used to get welled up at the original version just because, you know, right. going over Disneyland and everything. But when I saw the first new one, I was like I'm, openly weeping. It's amazing. Like, oh, my God. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's over and Epcot. Think... You know, because we all know I'm an right, Epcot right. fanboy, so. <laughs> but I think that's how I would change things a little bit. I would just take it off the lagoon completely. Hmm. Okay. I get it. I think... I, I mean, I don't know... Capacity wise, it's probably on the lagoon because you can get the most people around it, I guess, because it's pretty much three. Right. And I considered that, but they don't care about that in, in Hollywood Studios. No, because that road. No, happens. no, that's horrible. Yeah. I don't like watching fireworks in Hollywood Studios. No, well, especially I hate that it. show, I because hate if it. you're not but... in the front, then you can't really see everything. You know, you can't. You lose right. it when you're on the sides, especially if you're far mm-hmm. right like where the arch is heading into the pixar area now or where mermaid is right but i mean and, and apparently now the same thing with happily ever after i mean if you're standing on like the tomorrowland mm-hmm. bridge or over on the liberty square side with wishes you were still able to see the whole show because there wasn't much going on in the castle but now i don't know how much it wraps around the castle like if it encompasses all the turrets or if it's just mainly i'm sure it projection maps the whole thing but if you're like if you're far right. left but not from right, a sideways like on the bridge angle. heading towards Liberty Square or the next one up heading towards Crystal Palace. I don't know how much you see. I honestly don't. Right. Because I just like I said, I've never watched it from there. So, um, you know, Spaceship Earth is different. It's a it's a sphere. So I guess it's to project mm-hmm. stuff on it would be maybe easier because it's not as much like they don't have to go make wind. You know, they don't have to make it look like the castle. I mean, the castle's a pretty, pretty right intricate facade. You know, f- shape and to do it right. all on you know the most they've used spaceship earth for was uh, during the original run of illuminations when it was just called the illuminations it didn't have a a secondary name they used to when the show was over they would have uh, spaceship earth would turn into literally spaceship earth they would have the outlines of the continents in a green laser and that would spin around the globe as you were exiting the the park for the for the night so that was always pretty cool. And then once Siemens took over, then it had just the Siemens logo on it. And I think it would say goodbye in a few different languages, but not all of the one. Or maybe all. Yeah. Maybe it did do all 11. I'm not positive. I don't think so. Yeah, that was laser script right. from the Adventure Pavilion, American yeah. Adventure. And we know that they can because they did it with the Death Star. They turned it into oh, yeah, the, Death did the Death Star thing. You They've know, done the, but... the Monster Summer. They, they had Mike Wazowski on there. Mm-hmm. And, so, yeah. oh, I've I'm, missed that. you know, yes, I'm the technology's there. They can definitely do it if they wanted to. It's, you know, so I, my thing with illuminations is, I mean, set it on here. Follow me, you know, it's it's near and dear to my heart. I always since I was since seeing the first version of illuminations in 1986 or whatever. First time I saw that one, which was probably that year because I know I was there that year. I loved that show. I mean, Epcot's my favorite park. It always has been as you know, I, I I see it being that for the foreseeable future. You know, unless they totally destroy it with whatever updates they're doing, I don't know. Uh, but so that show, I will have to say though, when when Reflections of Earth first debuted, I didn't enjoy it as much. Like anything else, you know, when Spectral came and replaced the main show, uh, show parade, I was like, ah, I don't like it. Rah, rah, rah. And then I grew to love Spectro. And then when it flipped back again to the new Electrical Parade. Same thing, I was a grumpy old man about it. When Illuminations changed, I didn't really care for it because I felt it didn't represent the park as well as the original one did. So for those who did not see the original one, it was a lot more classical music, stuff you can recognize. Um, and then each country had a focal point as part of the show with a, with a small musical representation of a popular piece from that country and then the lights would light up specifically on that country the white lights would blink and it would do its synchronization and everything yep. else the only weird thing about that one was i always thought it was a strange song they picked for the america pavilion which was rhapsody and Bird song compared to all the classical pieces that they would play 
for all the other cu- countries. Uh, you know, like the Italy was a cl- your finiculi, finicula, classic Italian mandolin song, and uh, like a three tenor song. You know, Britain had a song that you easily recognized. I, I, I used to know the names of them. I don't know. Each country you knew what it was. You know, mm-hmm. other than China and Japan because they sound very similar. And I, you know, if you weren't looking, I couldn't tell you which one was which. But <laughs> anyway. So then when the new version came and it was a whole new score and not really focused on the countries but focused on the world uh, and the whole message with it and then, you know, the whole middle part that nobody seems to like with with the fountains and it's low-key. And I think the major reason that people don't like that part is because depending on where you're standing, you can't see anything. So you're just you're, you're staring right. at nothing for three minutes or three and a half minutes until it builds up again and they start shooting the fireworks off. I mean, I, I get it. Uh, I happen to, as I've gotten older and seen the show more times, I enjoy I enjoy the whole show back to front. It has numerous amounts of sentimental meaning to me. Uh, some pretty horrible things have happened while I've been down there and happen to be on nights where I'm remembering where I've been to Illuminations. Uh, so it, it holds a special place to me. And I get that part of it never really dies. You know, memories are memories, no matter what your, you know, uh, sights and sounds bring us back to that. And maybe that's why it, it's special to me. But I don't know. Like, Adrian hasn't seen it in eight years. It's something I can't miss. And I, if I could see it almost every night of a trip that I'm there, I'd be a happy man. So, yeah, I mean, as far as improving or plussing it, I, I think... A hybrid of both illuminations would probably solve the problem because the beginning of the new show and obviously the end are its strong points. The end and the, the finale, the, the the build up again after the slow, after the after the fountain part, and then into uh, uh, Kelly Coffee's song, and we go on, and then the whole thing, and then the huge finale with the barge blow off and everything. I mean, that's phenomenal. That's a great ending to a fireworks show. I can't, you know, can't deny that. Uh, you know, I think incorporating the countries and maybe even some of the future world pavilions, you know, not that you would have to turn around and see them, but you have that multi-trillion dollar globe that comes in to play that you can certainly add anything to. I mean, I, I don't see why you couldn't add uh, a new... Oh, I'm stumbling on my words because I can't think of what I'm trying to say. I can't think of the word I'm trying to say. New imagery? New, yes, thank you. New imagery, uh, some sort of a movie or whatever. Yeah, but I think part of the problem is, is that thing's so old and they can't get parts for it anymore. It's going to have to be revisited as something different or because the earth mechanism that opens up, I guess, has caused all kinds of issues with it. Has it? I thought it was last time they. Yeah, they had the issues ten years ago, but they managed to get somebody to make parts for them. Right. I don't know where that's at. So. Huh. But I didn't know that was in the discussions. Yeah, I I don't know if they're actually. So I I mean my I think that would be my I I don't want to see it go. I like it the way it is. I'm happy with it. Uh, I get that stuff has to change. I do. As much as I don't like it and I'll rant and rave about stuff, I I get it. I just don't want some generic – I don't want Fantasmic. And I had this conversation with somebody, you know, when the news, the day the news broke with a couple of people. And that seemed to be the overwhelming consensus, whether you like the, 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 sh- the current ver- version of the show or not. Nobody wants an IP-laced, uh, just generic show. No. Yeah, they don't want it to have it. Even though it seems to be turning that way with all the stuff they're going to be adding to World Showcase and Guardians coming in. and But I feel like that's just the extras. Like, that's why it doesn't bother me that we're getting IP and Epcot because it's right. not. I still feel like it's not the focus of no, the park. No, it's not. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. It's just complementing right. those. They're putting it in places that are appropriate. Right. It doesn't bother me. Right. right. It doesn't bother me either. And, uh, you know purists and people who are like, you know, in the outrage of, you know, Frozen being in Norway because Arendelle's a fictional city, ba ba da ba da I get it. Yes, right. that's a little bit different. But Ratatouille going into France makes sense because yeah. the movie took place in li- actual Paris. Not like, not right. fake Paris, like actual Paris. So, right. <laughs> you know. Right. 
same thing with Mexico. I mean, I love Coco. I lo- totally belongs there. Coco and... makes sense. I love Donald Duck and the three and the three amigos, but neither no neither. No, I hate that. Ride. Neither of the three of them were Mexican. <laughs> the the right. two birds were South American. And Donald Duck is Donald Duck. So I mean, right. Yeah, I, I I liked I enjoyed the original version much more because at least it, it was you know cultural Mexico. It was campy and it was you know along the same lines, but it wasn't as you know dopey as this one. <laughs> this one's fun. It's right. like, you know with the addition of the animatronics at the end instead of the movie, it's definitely plussed it up. But it's still uh, you know it's still silly. And I even I even am okay with the guardian stuff. It, I don't like how everybody says it belongs in Hollywood Studios. You can't put everything movie yeah. related in no, Hollywood you Studios. Can't. You just can't. You can't. And it doesn't and, need to be identical to California either. Right. <laughs> exactly. So I feel like like the way that they kind of twist it, put the spin on the Guardians awesome mix show or whatever, um, you know, they came to, they saw that Epcot was a cultural epicenter and they wanted to learn and like I get it, I get how they're spinning it, right. and it's fine. For right? Me. Yeah, I think I can kind of deal with that. In that, is that what the basis of that show is? Because I haven't, I haven't watched any. <laughs> supposed to be. I haven't watched any. Yeah, I watched it on it. YouTube. Oh, did you? We didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard it's really good and it's a lot of fun. So. Yeah, it, it it was fun. You know, and and as far as Guardians going in as a as an attraction and taking over something, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't wasn't thrilled with that. Another original uh, Future World Pavilion was was going away, but mm-hmm. I understand it wasn't a popular thing. It was a very huge, was a huge space, slow moving ride. It wasn't, you know, it was very dated. I get the whole thing, right? Uh, and I think I'm slowly. And I love the Guardians movies. I've said that too. I love, mm-hmm. and yes, not everything belongs at Hollywood Studios. Otherwise, Hollywood Studios would be the hugest park because that would be everything IP related would just be there. And then exactly. all the original stuff would be at the other three, except for well, not Magic Kingdom because that has to have IP stuff as well. But it's tastefully right. done there, so, but right? It makes sense. but that's also it's. I was gonna, too. just going like, to say that classic. yes, that's yeah, classic IP. Right. That is the point of that park, right? Uh, you know, they're just kind of slowly. Animal Kingdom, I guess you know doesn't really have it. I guess now with the up that bird show with the up characters, yeah. which. I, I haven't heard good or bad of it. I don't know how that is. Well, and Festival of the Lion King is there, yeah, but, but the, it fits in and feels it feels. But then again, the way that that's done, incorporated, that's, right? That's a classic thing, and I know there's people that don't like that type of stuff either. But you know, and the Nemo thing is there too. But I think the Festival right. of the Lion King is, to me, is a hundred times better than Nemo. I mean, Nemo's good. I listen. Right. I'm not knocking the actors or the you know thing was written from scratch. It's just not my. You know, I, I I don't care if I not don't see it again. Festival of the Lion King right. is another. It's like a must do. Like I have to go and see that show. It's just phenomenal. And really, if anything sticks out like a sore thumb in Animal Kingdom, it's Dinoland. It's yes. not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Finding Nemo. No. no, you're right. Well, now it's you know Donald's going to be Donald's Dino Land Bash or some crap yeah. like that. They're you know re, they're retooling the story and you know Chester and Hester are getting the boot and now like all of a sudden. Donald's a derivative of dinosaurs or some nonsense like right. that. That's just temporary. Yeah, we'll see how temporary oh, that yeah. is. <laughs> I think I think the whole thing's going to end up being Indiana Jones based. Do you really? Yeah. Well, I mean, the ride systems are the same as the dinosaur yeah, ride, and, and right. it's just, Indiana Jones is just done a trillion times better. Which my the building is exactly the which same. Which my uncle confirmed as well too. He said it's a smoother ride. He said in the theme, which Jessica has said on here numerous times how good that that indiana jones ride is he said the same thing he's like it's phenomenal it blows dinosaur away so hey listen wow. that's an upgrade i'll take i mean i don't like cookie cutter i don't like both coasts being the same but i'm all for upgrades because <laughs> yeah. di- uh, okay. you know because dinosaur is not on my list i could, don't really care if i do it or not you know yeah. Ki- yeah. kids like it but i you know it doesn't matter to me um, but anyway, back yeah. to... Uh... But I would be, yeah, kind of how we diverged from that topic. <laughs> like, I I Art. would be upset if the new nighttime show at Epcot was IP-based. Definitely. Because it's so, it would be so out of place. It just wouldn't, it yeah. literally would yes. make zero sense. 
in that park. Yeah. And I think there's getting that now with Epcot. I I, I know I have a good feeling about whatever's been whatever's going to be done. It's like it's it, it's a lot of cautious optimism, but it's a lot of okay. This this the other three parks have gotten love for a long time. Now mm-hmm. let's. I mean, this was you know, it's time to bring. You know, Epcot's got to come back to what it was for the f- it's future. It's got to be more than festivals. <laughs> it does. It does. You're right. It does. It has to be more than festivals. Yeah, because that's pretty much, you know, World Showcase that's is at this point. World Showcase is what you go to Epcot for. It used to be the other way around. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, I don't need to go to the countries. I don't want to learn stuff. You know what I mean? Not that you don't want to learn right. stuff, but I don't want to go on a world history tour. And it was the, the right. fun stuff was on, uh, you know, by the entrance. And now it seems to be the other way around, you know. People go right right yeah. through you know, they hit Soren, they hit Test Track, and then they're, you know, let's go to World Showcase and eat. Yes. Yep. Exactly. And, and, you know, as much as I love that park and it's my favorite, it's I'm guilty of doing the same thing because, oh, yeah. I, you know, if I, I don't go to Nemo, just uh, I won't go to the Living Seas just to ride Nemo as I would have when it was what it was beforehand. I'll go into the right. I'll go into the exploration center and look around and do that, you know, do that part of it. The imagination building, I don't go near unless I have to go to the bathroom on the back. I yep. just I can't yep. it just pains me to go in there knowing what it once was and how it was and you know, I don't know. And I mean the land pavilion is still great. I like I yeah. like everything in there. Uh, and I say this too, we and I don't mean we as in just our podcast, but Disney fanatics just in general we debate and we worry and we say what are they going to do what are they going to do and then whatever they do is mostly well received yes you know like i don't i feel like disney world is still in capable good hands i i think so too yeah i i don't follow too much of the management stuff of it and or know yeah i know who's in charge and who's because i know there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of people that moved around and shifted places um you know, I mean, the only decision I disagree with at this point is the fact that they're building Tron somewhere else instead of on top of Tomorrowland Speedway. <laughs> yeah, I agreed. The only decision I question is they're going to build it behind it. Yeah, well, it is. That's where it, that's where it's going. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand that either. I mean, I, I know they say it's still popular and the lines are long, but I don't know how they. I honestly don't know how that hasn't been brought into. Even if it didn't get a, even if it didn't get a Tron. Even if it didn't get decimated and they built the Tron coaster there, how they have not upgraded that to some sort of electric hybrid cars because right. there's nothing. I mean, the smells and whatever don't bother me. It's I'm around it all day long at my job, but I get it. Yes, it does. Sm- I mean, you know when you walk by it, you, it hits you like a ton of bricks. I, how they're getting away with just still running those those cars, I have no freaking clue. <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, the, the cast members who are assigned to work there must just—they must hate it. They, you have to. Hate I it. hope they make like five dollars extra an hour. No joke, because that is. Yeah. Can it's you like, imagine the heat and the smell yeah. and. It, oh, it's like torture. Oh. Yeah, completely. Well, it's supposed to be getting a refit, though. I hope so. I really do. I mean, they got those new cars right from Tokyo, just a year. Yeah, ago. that's the Honda thing they're doing at but California. It, I think California got yeah. Well, they got an upgrade some time ago, but now they're getting a really big upgrade. The Autopia? Yeah, with the Honda. Honda yeah. Honda's the new sponsor. So, I can't imagine they wouldn't do the same thing at Magic. It would make sense. Yeah. I mean, those cars need help. But anyway, <laughs> as far as nighttime shows go, <laughs> right. yes. a super hybrid version <laughs> of... So what would you change, RJ, if you could design it? Or I would prob I would probably leave the intro. And you know, I had because because this show is funny because it has like if you go on Wikipedia or even other sites, it's it has an outline, a timeline, and each section has a name of of what the show is like you know beginning, middle, and end. But they have like specific titles to each sequence. Throughout mm-hmm. the yeah, show. there's like an act one, an act two, right, and, an and act within three. each act, there's you know the I can't think of what they were, but there's like the crescendo, which you know the build up, the decrescendo, the this, the that, the other thing, and you know. So I, I think I would leave the beginning alone. I, I the only thing I think I would change if I had to have anything to do with it would be that that middle part. Mm-hmm. I would probably because the way that show is, 
and this was my defense towards the middle part and conversation I had with somebody. So I said before how how great the ending is and how all that build up is. Well, it's it wouldn't it wouldn't be as monumental is the word that came to my mind now, but that's probably maybe overstating it. it. Wouldn't be as spectacular as it is if it didn't have that part in the those three and a half minutes in the center that kind of low key down. It sets the stage. The, the globe roll. The globe goes in slowly. They have the you know the animals and everything, mm-hmm. and it slowly builds up, and then it jumps into the end of that act and beginning of the third act where it starts to build up, and then the fireworks come back on, and then it just. And then it takes off from there towards the ending. So I would still want that because I love that part. Like I still get, you know, your, my, your heart races, you get the emotional, you get the whole thing with it. You know, Wishes was the same way, you know, kind of, it was all good and everything mm-hmm. was great. And then it gets dark for a little bit. The evil queen comes on, came on, you had the upside, you know, had the face that would come in. The face firework would always be upside down. And, you know, you'd have that build up. You'd have the the, the barrage of the the red fireworks and that shot out around the perimeter of the castle. And then it did it again. Mm-hmm. And the blue fairy came and it was this huge crescendo musically and in the show. And when it got to the ending and Oh, the blue fairy, it was like, Oh man. Yay. You know what I mean? The music built up the whole thing, more right. fireworks. So I think you need that. I feel that like the star Wars one, I feel is pretty even keel all the way through because and and rightfully so. Like I have, I'm not saying that that's a problem. Like, but it's you know, it goes does stuff with the good guys. It does stuff with the bad guys. It has a little bit of old stuff, some of the new stuff, and you know, ends on a high note. But for other than that, it's not really a story. That's kind of just like a celebration of all things Star Wars. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, where whereas wishes and I, I assume happily ever after, and then as Illuminations was, it's a story. So you're there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's the end. You're you're going through everything with it i i guess i hope it would stay the same you know what i mean it it, it, so either either telling the story of of where we're going forward as as the people on this planet which is i guess you know that's kind of the theme of this one that we go on and you know the togetherness and everything else so I, i i don't know that i would change the theme a whole hell of a lot just maybe I don't know, do some minor upgrades. I just, I, I don't know. I can't, you know, <laughs> it's hard. To, it's, it's hard for me to think of, of ways to replace something that I enjoy just the way it is. You right. know what I mean? Like I would, yeah. I, like I said before, I would love if they in like in that center part, if they want to do something low key or whatever, do some nods to some of the, to the countries again. All right, you got eleven. You yeah, got, you got I, eleven I never pavilion. saw that. I'm kind of. It's it was very cool. If you can find a good video of it, it was it was a great show. I think it was it wasn't as chaotic as this one is. It was very low key. I mean, the fire. I mean, still had plenty of fireworks and the music was great and there was ups and downs. But it was basically a celebration of all those nations, but mostly America. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but that's basically what that show was. It did have a beginning, and the whole middle section was where it went to each pavilion and it was in a random order. So it wasn't like they started in Canada, went all the way around. It, it ended on the United States, but it bounced, it zigzags around world showcase. And there's green laser beams that were all over the place and white lights around the buildings. And that was a really cool show and had a great, you know, mm-hmm. ended and the music was phenomenal. It was, all, it was all recognizable stuff besides if you didn't mm-hmm. know everything from each country. But like I said, a lot of it was classical pieces that everybody has heard as you know in commercials here and there or wherever you know so <clears throat> i think maybe that was the other thing with illuminations like it was an, a totally original score like you'd never heard any of that before and i think people get all bent out of, not bent out of shape but it you know if it's not something that they're familiar with right away then i guess like you said adrian they have a hard time getting an attachment to it you know mm-hmm. but I, I think the difference between the parks is like epcot's Epcot kind of lost its identity along the way, too. So that probably doesn't help. Like, the Magic Kingdom is Magic Kingdom. Right. You know what it is. Like you said, the castle is at Cinderella Castle. That's the point. That's the icon of the park. It's in the center. You can see it from all, right. pretty much all points everywhere. And, you know, that's where the focal point of the show is. So, yeah, I think using Spaceship Earth as a focal point, I think would be great. I'd be happy with that if they did that mm-hmm. from either side, from the front side or from yeah. the uh, Interventions Plaza side. Either way, you can do something like... So when I when Milford and I were down there for the 
the uh, anniversary uh, with the Mouse Rants guys. Now, so we all we, right. we watched the fireworks kind of all separately. A bunch of them went on a went on the little cruise, and Milford was standing where he's standing. I wanted to go and stand in my spot where I like <laughs> to stand. And uh, so at the end, they were playing the classic. I know I talked about this during the trip report, but just bringing it back to using Spaceship Earth. So what they did on Spaceship Earth for probably about an hour after the show was over and as people were walking out. So I just sat back there along the fountain and watched because they were playing the original uh, entrance music and uh, and exit music from the from when the park opened in 82. Right. And they had images on the... They were uh, using the green laser images on the Spaceship Earth of some random designs and then they were using the original Epcot icon uh, pictures that used to be how you found your way around the park. So instead of having, like, the land is this way or, or World of Motion was this way or Horizons on was on this side, each pavilion had its own symbol. And so they would have mm-hmm. the symbols with, with that with the arrows and that, and that future print that Epcot Center used to be in, the really rounded... Uh, font type and that's how you got around the park and i loved those signs i love those all those uh things so they were broadcasting those on to spaceship earth at night it was like i was brought back to like you know my childhood being in epcot center it was like, oh my, you know, it was like all the feels times like a million so it was like it was like mm. the greatest and i know i took a video of it on my phone somewhere and i was, I was searching for it on the computer last week at some point and i can't find it i'm and i'm gonna be very upset if I didn't get it onto the computer or it got lost somewhere because it was, I, you know, videoed what I could, you know, about 15 minutes of it or something like that without filling up the phone. Cause it was just like, to me, it was just the coolest thing in the world because mm-hmm. they were, I mean, it was such a great nod to what the park was. And I felt like they were, I felt like whoever was in charge of that celebration was just as much of a fan of what Epcot was then. Cause I feel that's what that whole, day and all the stuff that they did really honored that like it wasn't just like hey Mm -hmm. Epcot's 35 let's throw a party and they really took it back to what it was and I think what they knew people enjoyed about it the most when it was in its heyday you know until the late 90s when when everything started shutting down in future world so I don't know way off topic on fireworks shows but (laughs) well it kind of brings me to this question though we've talked a lot about updating and epcot and how i don't know how i want to say this but how do you keep a park like epcot relevant in today's times with all these people who are upset about ip and changes and what it used to be how do you continue to keep attendance at that park up without again without it becoming just you go there to eat right i think it's i and that's all on the future world side because world showcase is world showcase i mean they're gonna update stuff with food and you know maybe upgrades to the pavilions here and there but those are pretty much in their place and that's always going to be a different experience with the street entertainment and whatever else is rolling through there so that i think is self-sufficient plus with all the festivals the future world side is the tough side because nowadays technology moves so fast and it's Mm -hmm. everything that they were that they had on that they were doing in the in the early 80s and stuff has all come to fruition and it's stuff we're using now like what we're recording on skype now i mean this was like you know then it was like holy crap you can talk to somebody on the other side of the planet but not only that but like live video feed was like whoa this you know this is insane it's like you know bizarro world right and now it's a part of everyday life so it's hard and also sorry i didn't mean to interrupt but i was thinking about how much even that has evolved in the parks because i was thinking about the agent p's world showcase adventures or whatever and you used to have to go get a physical thing from the cast member and then they were like oh wow now you can do it on your phone and then six months later i was like oh hey we've integrated into this app i just i just think it's interesting how like you were saying technology moves so quickly and disney's trying to keep up right but it's it's really hard, hard. in that park, I think. So I, I think that idea of being a showcase for things to come is probably mm-hmm. hard to do, which is probably why they got away from that. But I, right. I liked the idea of where where Interventions was starting to go, where it was like Communicore when it was the Communicore buildings. It had some great um, displays in there and and boots and things to do along the same lines of 
like they had uh, like the sum of all thrills, and then they had like the little you could learn to ride a Segway. I mean, this was more recent stuff, but right. Communicore had things like that too, and they had little, cool little shows to showcase new technologies and stuff like that. And they could probably do. I don't think you can fill two building spaces like they had. I mean, I mean, they've been long. You know, one's a meet and greet now, and the other ones, you know, the restaurant and nothing <laughs> in the shop. But, right. Uh, I think they could probably do something like that, like a World's Fair type of area with like an ever-changing thing. The problem is that the ever-changing thing probably has to be quicker. You know, you can't leave stuff maybe every six months or something like that because stuff does change quickly or, you know, isn't as interesting. And plus people today are, you know, instant gratification. So if it's it's not something that's grabbing them immediately, they're, they're, you know... And what about rumors of new pavilions? Brazil seems to be the one that keeps popping up, and I don't really understand that. But, I mean, there's so many other better ones, I think, that would be more... I don't know. Do you think they're ever going to move forward with it? Or what the time frame for that might be? I don't know. I mean, they have space. Yeah. They have space to do all, to do a couple of them. There's some plots of land. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what that entails anymore because I, I don't yeah. know if they, they – I think Morocco is the only one that's fully still sponsored by the Kingdom of Morocco. Like they pay for upkeep, I believe, and and have a huge say in what goes in. And I think that restaurant group that did Spice Road Table I think still had to be approved by the Moroccan – royalty or whatever i could be wrong on that but i know they're still heavily into what it is and i i thought at one point china was too the republic of china i think that they Mm -hmm. had a lot to do with what was in their pavilion but i think the rest of them are just you know kind of whatever he wants to put into it anymore i don't i don't know how much of each country has to do with it other than when they have their uh I want to say locals, but it's not locals. <laughs> when they have their <laughs> people from the country that come and, and, and right. work. I can't think of the right word. <laughs> like native? Native. I, word I guess that's a yeah. better word for it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, like in, term, terminology is not with not with me tonight. But, uh, okay. yeah, see, Epcot's a tricky park because, it, you know, like you were saying, it's hard. You're not going to appease anybody, which you're not going to with any of them. Um, right. But I think that one gets the most... It just gets beat up on the most, mm-hmm. you know, probably because what it once was and what it is now. It's and even what it once was wasn't what Walt envisioned for no, it. Which no, it was nowhere. It's brought up in arguments all gets, the time, too. Right, which gets brought up in it, and I, I, I don't think what he actually envisioned would have probably worked. Maybe nowadays right. it probably would be because there's a lot of communities that are being built up in that way, where it's all encompassing, where you never literally have to leave the bubble you you work play and live all in one general area and there's no need to really travel unless you're going you know far away on vacation but for you know i don't know is utopian society the right word i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i don't know if that's the right thing to say but uh yeah it's just hard it just my thing is and i think people who share the same mindset as i do about the original epcot Pavilions, and then when uh, Living Seas was added in '86, and then in '89, I believe, is when Wonders of Life came online, or '88. Um, those, they were just, they were just so well done to me. The story, and I said it a million times on here, just the storytelling through and through on all of them was just so phenomenal. It was like no holds barred. And I know there was budget cuts if you listen to how stuff was made and on on some on podcasts or read books. You know, there was there was, you know, stuff planned for a lot of those pavilions that didn't get made or or got cut short because, you know, they were taking too long to build and and so on and so forth. But I, you know, to me, everything that was there was perfect. It was great. And it angered me knowing that some of them some of their demises for some of those ones were due to, you know, construction issues or with, unfortunately with Horizons, there was a sinkhole, which you can never predict that, but 
you know, <laughs> it just sucks that that's something that was that you know was literally tearing the building apart. So there was no other choice. I mean, ridership was down and stuff anyway, but like stuff with like Journey into Imagination when it was just you know stuff was falling apart. The track was they were having issues with the track and the ride system because of the complexity of it, and so their way to fix it instead of you know taking it offline for a long amount of time to actually fix the problem is eh, let's take out half the track and slap some dumb crap in there and make figment make right. make figment an annoying brat <laughs> eh, but you know what do i know so anyway I, I you know i don't know i'm not much of an idea man when it comes to stuff like this i but i it just i do i think that park is just problematic like we've said it's just yeah i I think the idea of it is is not something that people are akin or in their wheelhouse nowadays. You know, it's you could say edutainment. I, I don't think they even use that term for anything anymore. Right. But I think it can be done in a way that is still where you can still take something away from it and still have that fun value and that repeatability. It, I think it's interesting in that if you took Epcot out in isolation, it would not be a theme park people would want to go to. No. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But as a but it's so funny that so many people that go to Disney World for the first time come back and are completely surprised by how much they enjoyed Epcot. Right. You know? Because it's unique. So, it is. It's very different. Because if you think about the other three parks, the Magic Kingdom is I mean, it's the Magic Kingdom, but it's more or less an amusement park because there's tons of rides and attractions and stuff to do. The studios Mm -hmm. kind of is, too. Now it's getting Mm -hmm. some more. Now that's how it's evolved. Right. Because it's no longer really a backstage kind of. Right. It's now pretty much a full, just regular theme park with attractions and shows. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, Animal Kingdom. is a zoo. It's a zoo. They can call it. They can say not a zoo all they want. It's an accredited, you know, it's got the accreditations for being a zoo and housing animals and everything else. It's just done in a way where it doesn't seem like you're just walking around looking at animals. The way they presented the safari, the, you know, the, the jungle treks and the, the bird show and the, the different areas where there is different wildlife out and about. Yes, it is similar to a zoo where you can walk up and watch the monkeys play and everything like that. But (laughs) you know, the theming is, is well beyond any zoo, any zoo I've ever been to. Right. I mean, I've never been to some of the bigger ones all over the country, but I can't imagine they're themed <laughs> much like Animal Kingdom is. Right. So, right. Yeah, Epcot's definitely. But if you took Animal Kingdom out in isolation, and it was a five-hour drive for me. I would probably take a trip to that one. Agreed. Yes. Which I just—I don't know. I just—I love Epcot too. I mean, it. It goes in the rotation of my daily change of favorite park, <laughs> and and so I'm just, but I'm I'm fascinated by it at the same time. Yo, oh, I am too. I am too. You know, I I only could wish that pe- people were able to. I mean, I know it's impossible because everybody's born at a different part of time. You know, everybody's mm. born different years, and people didn't, you know, travel to, didn't go on vacation. You know down there all the time either so you know for people Mm -hmm. who hadn't seen it and hear me yammer on about it i mean yes you can watch videos you can see pictures and that's all well and great but to actually experience that park when it was in its heyday was it was like nothing else it really really wasn't there was just a it was a sense of wonderment when you went in you're like wow like i Mm -hmm. need to see all this stuff to see and i guess it's who you are too i mean i'm you know my personality is i you know I work with my hands. I, I work in construction. I fix stuff. I take stuff apart. So that aspect of all that fascinates me anyway. So learning how stuff worked and, and how to further things and technology and stuff is that's, you know, my curiosity. That's where it lies. Right. So I guess maybe that plays part of it too. There's some people who could care less about how stuff works. They just want it to work. And when it doesn't, they want to get something new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, to each their own. Everybody's different. So, you stay out of Epcot and go somewhere else. And so, my <laughs> lines are shorter. <laughs> as far as f- nighttime shows go, <laughs> besides a uh, fireworks show, they really should have a 
Epcot should have a parade around the lagoon like they used to for the Millennium Celebration, too. Milford, did you ever see that? You started going when? Yes, I loved that the, the parade. The Tapestry of I Nations. I love Tapestry oh of Nations. I didn't appreciate it as much when I would see it as I did until after it was gone, like towards the end. Like, I remember when it first came out, I was like, oh, my God, this thing's last forever. This music is boring. Just play the fireworks. <laughs> but then as you, I would watch it and, you know, you appreciate stuff when you're not an annoying teenager, <laughs> it, uh... I was like, wow, this is like... And they used to do that parade twice every night. Yeah. And it was spectacular. Before... It was yeah. so... And cool. when it got darker, it was cool because they had these lights that shone up on yep. the faces of the puppets yep. and on the different ride vehicles. Those and... huge drum wheels and those every, the, yeah. the, the, the musicians on the stilts and everything. Yeah, that thing was like a... Man, there was so much to look at. It was almost like a carnival yes. type carnival type yeah you know parade but not K. and that's what i thought was cool about yeah, it yeah you know it was carnival but it wasn't like super high energy and crazy like it was a nice mellow very it was like carnival without the naked people <laughs> <laughs> yes there was lots of feathers that's for sure uh no it was it was awesome it was a very 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 cool experience to say the least. And it was very Epcot. Like, that was, like, perfect yes. world showcase accumulation of everything. It was just, that was, yeah, it was very well done. Very, very well done. Animal Kingdom could could do something like that. Have a parade, something similar to that, either at nighttime or at dusk, like, before the River's a Light thing. And I think they could pull off something like that. Because Mickey's Jam and Jungle Parade was fun, but it got kind of a, annoying. And it was well. I go to Animal Kingdom for the cultural stuff almost as much as I go to Epcot for that. Oh, absolutely! So that oh, me would too. Be awesome. I think that's why Animal Kingdom fascinates me, and it moved like it jumped up to like number two for me, mm-hmm. park wise. You know, it's it's you know for me it's you know it's Epcot, Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, and the studios. And mm-hmm. I, I don't even yeah. with all the new stuff opening at the studios, I, I don't know that that's going to you know surpass Magic Kingdom for me. But no. I mean, it's still going to be fun to go to, and I, mean, I know I'm going to love everything. But it, you know overall experience wise so yeah i'm yeah. with you adrian the, the the cultural stuff is at animal kingdom is fantastic i love going back to africa and watching the musicians yes and i love the band and right when you're done watching Birdica, you just you walk a little bit more right before the little not the whole big Harambe market, but like the, the fruit stand Harambe market little area. And mm-hmm. there's a guy there who is doing the hand carvings with the wood hammer. And he, and, yep. he, and you can play like the little game with him, the Moncala with the agates and the and that big dish, the, the yeah. dished out thing. Yeah, that, I could sit and watch that dude carving wood all day. Yeah, that's no, cool stuff. There's so many, you know, great things like that. And I mean, you know. They all used to have cool stuff like that. Maybe not building stuff, but, you know, studios, that was like the high point of that place. All the, the streetmosphere people walking around and the city works, mm-hmm. the right. public works guys and the uh, the guy and the lady who would do the whole skit where he would take cues from the audience and he would have to remember everything everybody said. <laughs> uh, yeah. He would do that over on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, that was fantastic. But the public works guys were my favorite. I loved those guys. There was a couple other acts that that used to come out and stuff, and yeah, it's just you know that stuff to me is just as good as as the indoor attractions and the shows mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know, free entertainment if you would, you know, right? <laughs> bonus, bonus entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. So, do you think? Uh, so we'll stay on nighttime shows, but we'll shift parks. Do you think once Star Wars Land is open that? It's going to have a dedicated nighttime show just there? Is it going to, like, is what they play on the Chinese theater going to shift to Star Wars land somehow? And then maybe there's a generic Hollywood Studios fireworks show? Or is it just going to be Star Wars and that's it? I think think it's going to be Star Star Wars Wars and Fantasmic. Okay. Yeah. But it's going to stay where it is or they're going to move it into Star Wars land? You know, I don't know. I don't know what the... I think it'll stay. I think Star Wars Land is going to be... I'll eventually get around to calling it Galaxy Edge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's... The land itself is going to be so immersive that I don't think they're going to have a show. Gotcha. The land... You the, know what the, I'm saying? The land itself will be the show. 
Right, exactly. Because that's the point, right? Plus, they'll have the hotel where you can oh, interact. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know, I forgot about the hotel. So, yeah. yeah, so I feel like they're going to, if they were to introduce something, it would be more like a, like the drummers in Pandora, okay. you know, like have a cantina kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they're going to go for integrity of the IP gotcha. more than. Right, right, right. Okay. Full, full immersion. Yeah, full immersion. So thinking off the top of my head, being that you said about the hotel, I wonder why. Now, I didn't see the movie, so it may not even make sense to it. But for Avatar, with the world of Pandora and wanting to fully immerse you in that. And I don't know space wise if it would even work like. Would they be able to put some sort of a resort on that end of, you know, and for the whole full Pandora experience? Or is there just not that much of it to to do that with? Well, there's got to be the space, right? Because that park is humongous. But as for, I think they'll see how it works out with Star Wars. I guess so. Yeah. But I also don't think that Avatar has as large of a cult following. No, that's so true. So for the exorbitant prices they're going to charge for the Star Wars experience. Right, right, right. Which are ne- it's necessary to have such an exorbitant price because they're, I mean, they're building an entire hotel based on it. Right, right, right. So mm-hmm. That's true. I don't usually agree with Disney prices. But no, I don't either, but I... I think... I guess for what you get, it's probably not that terrible. Yeah. If it's going to be yeah. full on, but... You have to really want to be like in, you know, involved in it yeah. as soon as you walk through the doors of that resort. And, you know, I, I just hope what happens is people don't people don't want to stay there. People are going to want to stay there as a Star Wars hotel. I don't know that everybody's right. going to want to play along with everything that's going on. So is there going to be like, yeah, I don't. Is it is it going to be like what happened with, you know, Whispering Canyon? Like enough people are going to complain and it's just going to go and, and that aspect of it's going to go away. Or are they going to have two different experiences? Like, okay, you can stay at the hotel. You want to experience the room and the feel of it and stay in the Star Wars hotel, but you don't want to do any of the character interactment. You know, you wear a right. certain tag I think or it'll something. be interesting however they decide to do it. Because I want to say there was even rumor that you, you're provided with clothing, maybe? Like you yeah, you're provided with a like, uniform, and you get a position, and... yeah. I mean, it's, it's like live like action a role play, play type thing. Right. So, I mean, at least from my understanding of what it's going to be. Right. And so, I'm excited. Yeah, so I guess if you're walking around in your Mickey Mouse shirt, they're just going to assume. But then again, they may have all character interactions in the hotel be immersive. It could be, right. Right. You know, no matter what, you just may not have a mission got, as a regular. Right, right, right. I got you. I got you. Yeah, you won't be you won't be ignored, but you're right. not going to be uh, right. They're not going to send you off or make you part They're of the story. They're not going to go hangar bay five. Or right, right, right. Yeah. They'll respect that you want to be here for the experience, but we're not going to force you to do something you don't want to. Right. Type deal. Right. That's that'd be pretty cool if if it wasn't that way. That if you know if you wanted to be fully engaged in it, you know, you go up to your room and you put on your suit or special shirt or whatever the hell it is, and then they know yeah. that all right, I'm I'm wandering around. Give me a job or tell me, you know, whatever has to happen, right? Type deal. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think I'd I be. Mean, I think I'd be into that. Plays out. Like you could, you know, you could pick and choose when you want to be, you know, f- f- all the way in. Yeah, and I mean. Like I said, that that doesn't necessarily interest me. I'm not into live action role play at all. But <laughs> you know, given the right IP, I might. I don't know. Right. No, I you hear know, you. If if they opened up claw <gasps> robes and <laughs> wait, I want just saying. <laughs> I you know I don't know if I would. Uh, I've never done it. Never did any of that stuff or got into any of that stuff either. So I don't know how I would feel about it if we ever stayed at that resort. I think I would probably get into it because I don't mind being goofy or making an ass out of myself in pu- in public right. and especially in Disney because it's you know it's your safe it's my safe place. So right, it's like the only if you're gonna act like a five right. year old, that's, that's the, the best place, place to do it. it. Right, <laughs> and embarrass your children at the same time. It's like a win win. <laughs> that's a bonus. It's an absolute bonus, <laughs> especially now that mine are. One teenager and one nearing teenager. It's even more fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so excited. 
Uh, so anyway, yeah, we'll have to see how that all shakes out. And yeah. The craziness that'll come with. So. But I like it. I like how the parks are evolving. I like that they're not allowing them to stay stagnant. Because I think it would be really easy for a company that big and a park that big to just say, this is what we do. It's worked for nearly 50 years. You know, like it or leave right. it. I think they could get away with it and still, and the people who didn't care for it probably just wouldn't come every year, maybe every three years because they know it would be the same stuff. But I think the fact that it right. is ever-changing and in, within the past, I don't know, when did the new Fantasyland that was 2005, uh, 2012 that yeah. came online. So for the past five years, uh, twelve, six years, there's been huge new stuff opening and still more mm -hmm. to come, at least until next year with Star Wars. And then, you know, supposedly Epcot will be done, you know, for the 40th anniversary of Walt Disney World in 2021. So we'll see what happens. You know, it's definitely exciting times if you're, you know, into the newer stuff and seeing where everything's going and mm -hmm. so all we can do is see. Lord, and I but I just can't keep up. Like yeah. I, I you can't do everything there already in a single no. trip and then when they add something new, you're like, "But I didn't do this thing right. yet." And I still <laughs> I still laugh at myself and can't believe that when we were there this April, staying at the Polynesian, I did not step foot into Trader Sam's to sit and hang out there. I and I said to myself, to my wife, and I was like, we can go there like multiple nights. You know what I mean? Yeah. Our rooms were all right next to each other. My brother's, mine, our buddies were across the way, and my parents were next to it. You know, kids could fall asleep. And my mother could just open the little adjoining <laughs> door to make sure they're, you know, sleeping. And, mm -hmm. and not once. Not once. I don't know. The last day we were leaving, I'm like, I, I can't believe it. I can't. I, I mean, I had drinks from there on the outside, but I can't believe I didn't go and sit. Right. And the place wasn't crazy. Like, the couple of times I popped my head in there, there was not a, a huge wait to get in. And I was uh, like, yeah, lucky. exactly. And it wasn't, you know. <laughs> we tried again in this past trip, and it was an hour wait. We're like, we just give up. Just give yeah. Up. I don't know. So, anyway. At one time, I swear, it was like. The clouds yeah. parted. And <laughs> I know. You're right. I know. <laughs> the Red Sea divided, and somehow right, we got so. a table. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, I don't know. I mean, when Milford and I went, we went, what, two nights in a row? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like the first night, you and I, or the second, whatever. Yeah, that first night, and then we went then with everybody, or most everybody else, the next time. we were... Yep. We got loaded that first night. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we were sitting with these people and we moved and sat with these people <laughs> talking to whoever was sitting with us yeah that was interesting that ah, was cool man I, I like that I don't mind yeah I do too I think before we wrap up the only other thing I can say is and I know it's not in popular belief because there hasn't been one in so long and I think people don't want it but I would need it I would love a uh, another nighttime parade at the old Magic Kingdom Oh, yes. I please. mean, I grew up with one. I've never not had one other than this past, you know, since Main Street Electrical Blade left. Uh, so it kind of saddens me because that was kind of like a unique thing to the Magic Kingdom and to Walt Disney World. They had a friggin' parade at night with lights and craziness and awesome music. And the fact that there is yeah. none, it's just, I don't know, it's sad. <laughs> it's really sad. Wouldn't hurt my feelings to see a parade back at Hollywood Studios either, though I pretty much assume that ship is sailed. I don't think they'll ever run one during the day anymore. I think it was when they did it, they were great parades when they would do it in conjunction with these movies that came out. Yeah. But logistically, like the, the flow of that park is so horrible as it is to have a, right. God, when they used to do that block party Pixar thing and it would stop for 20 minutes so kids can dance. Oh, you couldn't get anywhere. You couldn't get anywhere. No. Maybe once construction's done, they'll they'll think about it again because then you'll have other places to go. But there was nowhere to hide when those parades were going. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to go. If you weren't on the other side of, you know, the Sunset Boulevard side, so you can escape to the back lot area. That's it. You were you were trapped until that damn thing was done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we're gonna wrap this one up. 
And we thank you all for listening. And we'll talk to everybody next time. Hey, so I wanted to uh, give everybody an update on the Indie Disney Meet, which this year will be August 25th, and it will run from noon to 7. Uh, there's lots of things going on. As you guys know, last year we raised $25,000 for Give Kids the World uh, through our own tax-deductible organization here, Magical Wishes for Kids. Uh, if you want uh, to donate and you can't make the meet, there is a link on the page that we will link in the show notes uh, for how to get to that. Um, but lots of things going to happen this year. Uh, Lou Mangello will actually be at the meet this year, and he'll be doing a uh, basically a talk show, kind of talking to the crowd and stuff. Uh, Roxy Dar will be there, who is a uh, Mouse Pro's Travel Main Stage. Uh, he'll be uh, Roxy is a singer, and we'll be doing a bunch of different. Uh, uh, she will be doing a bunch of different uh, princess voices and songs. Uh, we're going to have a virtual reality experience that will be a hot air balloon experience. Also, uh, one of the uh, show sponsor or the meet sponsors is actually going to be giving away a Walt Disney World vacation, six night, seven day Walt Disney World vacation for a family of four, two adults, two children. Accommodations at a DVC resort, studio villa of the winner's choice, subject to availability, standard Disney dining plan for four, six day base theme ticket, theme park ticket for four, hundred dollar gift card, and of course Disney's Magical Express. Uh, tickets for your chance to win this dream vacation can only be purchased at the Indy Disney Meet for $20 each. We've got lots of food sponsors this year. Uh, Meyer, Chick-fil-A, Papa John's, Perkins, uh, lots of different foods that we're going to have there this year. On top of everything that all the volunteers and people that are attending the uh, Disney Meet actually bring uh, homemade food. Uh, and we'll have a Dole Whip machine there as well. Uh, there'll be presentations from uh, Disney Insider Jim Hill and a few other people. We'll have the Expo again this year, which will be full of podcasters, bloggers, vloggers, experts, travel agents. Uh, I'll actually be there set up as my blog site, uh, this podcast, and as my travel agency. Uh, there will be a raffle as usual. Uh, silent auction with lots of items in the silent auction. Lots of kids activities. Uh, the princesses from Once Upon a Princess will be there yet again. Uh, 501st Legion. Uh, those are the guys that dress up in all the Star Wars costumes. Uh, will be there. Uh, again, podcasters, vloggers. There'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 different podcasters and vloggers at the meet. Uh, they also have... Uh, set up room blocks at both the Hilton Garden Inn and also the Fairfield uh, in Fishers if you want to stay the night. Got a few corporate sponsors, Classic Cleaners, Behind the Ears Podcast, Be Our Guest Podcast, Chef Todd Eats Disney, CRI Devices, Duke Realty Group, Equian, Happily Ever Disney, Hyatt Magical Vacations by Katie Surfleet, uh, Hilton Garden, Inn of Fishers, Mouse Pros Travel, Sunshine Rewards, and The Magic for Less Travel. So, lots of uh, things going on at the Disney Meet. Again, that's August 25th from noon to 7. Uh, it's totally free. All they ask is that you bring something to share. Uh, cookies, cake, whatever food item you want to bring. Um, and you'll actually get a raffle ticket just for showing up. And you can buy additional ones. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, just drop me a line, and I can answer questions as need be. Thanks. With the stillness of the night, there comes a time to understand, to reach out and touch tomorrow. Take the future in our hand We can see a new horizon Built on all that we have done And our dreams begin another thousand steps
Follow our troop at www.dizexplorers.com, where you can find all the links for all our hosts' social media accounts. You can also follow the podcast on our Facebook group at The Diz Explorers, and on Twitter and Instagram at The Diz Explorers. You can download this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher Radio, and also on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Hope you had a good time. Spectral magic.